Hey guys, welcome to Edumon Tutorials. This is Sirisha and I'm here to help you out with signals and systems. So we'll move on to the first unit. I have uh, divided this unit into two parts. Part one will be signals and part two will be systems. So these are the topics under part one. That is the basic introduction to the signals, classification of signals, representation of discrete time signals, basic elementary signals, and transformation of signal. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to learn these two topics that is the basic introduction to the signals and the classification. So let's get into it. Okay, uh, firstly, what is a signal? A signal is defined as a physical quantity that varies with time, space, or any other independent variable. Let me make this definition clear for you with a simple example here. Let us imagine that a man is delivering his speech. His amplitude won't be the same throughout the time. It varies. So his variation of amplitude with time is represented by a graph. This uh, graph representation is nothing but the signal. So it's a physical quantity. So human speech here is an example for the physical quantity that is varying with time. Time here is an independent variable. And a signal is a mathematical function of one or more independent variables that carries information. Let us consider this signal. We know that this is a sine wave. So I represented this signal into a mathematical equation that is x is equal to sine of t. So it is a mathematical function of time which is an independent variable and that carries information. So here the signal carries information. What information does it carry? At what instance of time we have a very high amplitude and at what instance of time we have a very low amplitude. This is the information that a signal carry in this example. Next, a signal can be a one-dimensional signal, a two-dimensional signal or a multi-dimensional signal. If a signal depends only on one variable, then it is known as a one-dimensional signal. As uh, we have seen in the previous example, this is an example for a one-dimensional signal. Since time is the only independent variable here, similarly we have two-dimensional signal. That is, if a signal depends on two independent variables, and we have multi-dimensional signals. That is, if a signal depends on more than two independent variables. Our next topic is the classification of signals. Signals are defined, are classified into these six categories. Continuous and discrete time signals, deterministic and non-deterministic signals, even and odd signals, periodic and aperiodic signals, causal and non-causal signals, energy and power signals. So let us learn more in detail about these six categories. So our first category is continuous and discrete time signals continuous time signal signals that are defined for all values of time t and is represented by x of t are called continuous time signals and discrete time signals signals that are defined at discrete instants of time and is represented by x of n are called discrete time signals if you observe this uh, example x of t is defined for all instants of time t that is or if you take any point on time axis, you have a corresponding x of t value. So this signal is a continuous time signal. Similarly, uh, here x of n is defined only at discrete instance of n values. Like you have for x of n value at n is equal to 0, x of n value at n is equal to 1, x of n at n is equal to 2 and so on. If you take a point, let us say 0 0.4 between these two, you don't have a corresponding x of n value. So this is a discrete time signal. Our second category includes the deterministic and non-deterministic signals. Deterministic signal, a signal exhibiting no uncertainty of value at any given instant of time is called a deterministic signal. Non-deterministic signal, a signal characterized by uncertainty before its actual occurrence is called a non-deterministic signal. So uh, if you see this example, this signal is predictable. It is very certain. And if you observe the non-deterministic signal, it's so random. 
like it is uh, characterized by uncertainty so this random signal is otherwise known as a non-deterministic signal the third category is even and odd signals even signal a continuous time signal x of t is said to be even signal if it satisfies the condition x of t is equal to x of minus t for all t that is for all values of time t uh, and a continuous time signal x of t is said to be odd if it satisfies the condition x of minus t is equal to minus x of t for all t this is an even signal like whatever is there on the positive time axis the same as the mirror image about this axis on the negative axis so this is symmetric or even signal and coming to the odd signal uh, here about this axis the negative time axis the signal which is there it is not symmetric about this axis so it is anti-symmetric that is x of t is equal to minus x of t so this is an odd signal the fourth classification is the periodic and non-periodic signals. Non-periodic signals are otherwise known as aperiodic signals. Both mean the same. So, a periodic signal. A continuous time signal x of t is said to be periodic if it satisfies the condition x of t plus capital T is equal to x of t for all t, where capital T is known as the fundamental time period. Aperiodic signals. A continuous time signal is said to be a periodic if the condition x of t plus capital T is equal to x of t is not satisfied. So if you see this example, the same wave is repeated after this time period. So let it, for, from here to here, if it is the time period, the same signal is repeated after this time period. So this is periodic with capital T. And for the non-periodic signals, x of t plus capital T is not equal to x of t. That is, we don't have the same wave repeated after a time period. So, this will be the non-periodic signals. The next classification is the causal and non-causal signal. Causal signal. A continuous time signal x of t is said to be causal if x of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0. And for non-causal signal, a continuous time signal x of t is said to be non-causal if x of t is not equal to 0 for t less than 0. These definitions are illustrated with, a, with an example here. So if you see this, here x of t is 0 for t less than 0. That is for the negative time axis, x of t value is 0. So this will be a causal signal. And for the non-causal signal, we have x of t for t less than 0. So this will be a non-causal signal. Our last classification is energy and power signals. Energy signal. A signal x of t is said to be an energy signal if the energy satisfies 0 less than e less than infinity. For an energy signal, p is equal to 0. So here capital E represents the energy and capital P represents the power. So here energy is a finite value and the power is 0. And for power signals, a signal x of t is called a power signal if the power satisfies 0 less than p less than infinity. For an energy signal, E is equal to infinity. So, for example, if they gave you a signal x of t, you need to calculate the energy and power using these formulas. So, for continuous time signal, these are the formulas for the energy and power. And for discrete time signals, uh, these are the formulas for energy and power. So the formula goes with E is equal to sigma, sorry, integral minus infinity to infinity mod x of t squared dt. And for power, it is P is equal to limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integral minus t to t mod x of t squared dt. And for discrete time signal, we know that the index will be n and for continuous, it will be t. So, E is equal to sigma n varying from minus infinity to infinity mod x of n square, n square. And for power, it is a limit n tends to infinity 1 by 2 n sigma n varying from minus infinity to infinity mod x of n square. So, after finding uh, the energy and the power values, 
but if, uh, if energy is zero and the power is if the energy is finite and power is zero that will be an energy signal and if power is a finite value and energy is an infinite value that will be a power signal so these are the two topics uh, done today let us have a quick recap of what we have just learned from the beginning so we have learned uh, what a signal is so the, the basic definition goes like uh, the physical quantity that is varying with time is said to be a signal and it can be one dimensional signal a uh, two dimensional signal uh, signal or a multi dimensional signal depending upon the number of independent variables and signals are classified into the six categories continuous time signal is if x of t is defined for all values of time t that will be a continuous time signal and if x of n is defined only at discrete instance of time that will be a discrete time signal uh, the second category is deterministic and non-deterministic signal if the signal is very certain that is it is specific or predictable that will be a deterministic signal and if the signal is very random that will be a non-deterministic signal the third is even and odd signals uh, an even signal is that which is symmetric about the axis on both the positive and the negative sides and that which is uh, anti-symmetric is said to be a odd signal we ha next we have learned the periodic and non-periodic signals the signal which repeats after a period uh, capital t that is said to be a periodic signal and that uh, the signal which doesn't repeat after a particular time period that will be a non-periodic signal and causal and non-causal sig uh, signals if x of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0 that will be a causal signal and x of t not equal to 0 for t less than 0 that will be a non-causal signal and the last category is energy and power signals you have uh, these formulas depending upon the energy and power values you will decide whether it is an energy signal or a power signal depending on these conditions so a point to be remembered here is that a uh, signal cannot be both energy and power signal so this is the end of the lecture i hope uh, it is understood see you guys in the next video thank you